This God consciousness is absolutely essential and required. Before marriage is the stage. These are three stages. The stage before marriage is before a person gets married. He needs to have a life of taqwa. That doesn't mean that if a person did not have a life of taqwa, then that's it, their marriage is you know, doomed. No, there's always, you can repent, we can repent, the door is always open. And that's why people who are not married, if they've lived a life of sins, then it is highly important that before marriage, they make tawbah, they repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they make their connection with Allah strong, they clean their slate, and then, then enter marriage. Do not enter marriage with a slate full of sins because it's not. It's going to be harmful. It's not going to bring the bar- barakah and the blessings in the marriage. A marriage will be full of blessings and barakah if it started off on the right foot. Before marriage, you need, we need to change our lives. I've said to a lot of youngsters, said, look, before you get married, change, even if it's a day before, change your life. Change your, but it's better to change beforehand. At least a few months in advance, at least a year in advance. Change your lifestyle, change your ways. Because something that becomes a habit, it remains even after your marriage. You know, habits, sins which are form a habit. And, and, and there are people, young people, you see them that they have certain habits before marriage and they think, you know what, when I get married, I'm going to sort all this out. They still get involved in the same sins despite having a wife. What's happened? Then they think, probably this wife is not right for me, so maybe I want to get married again. This guy, he tried two, three, four, five wives. He just, he was never satisfied. Because he was living a life full of sins before. And he had some specific problems. And I don't want to go into the details of his problems, but some specific bad habits. And he thought that because I'm not married, this is the reason why I have these habits. And once I get married, then I'm going to be sorted. But it carried on. And it carries on and it carries on and you could be 40, you could be 50, you could be 60, you could be an old man and you'll have the same bad habits. If somebody has a habit, for example, in his youth of, of you know, looking at lustfully at, at the opposite gender, especially specifically men looking at women in a lustful way because that's generally what happens and not the other way around. That habit, when it becomes engraved, it remains despite you getting married. It's not going to stop with marriage, it'll carry on. You can have 200 wives and still do the same. Not, not that you can have 200 wives, but I'm just saying. You, you could have, you could have, you know, you could marry, you could have children, but that habit will remain. So before marriage, we need to really seriously, before marriage, change our ways. This is very important. Taqwa before marriage, starting off on the right foot. Clean your slate. Make tawbah and repent with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Start off on the right foot. Don't be involved in unlawful relationships. And that does not mean if somebody wants to marry someone who they were already in a relationship with, Islam allows it, of course, with our rules, etc. But it, it's allowed. But if you start off on the right, wrong foot, then it's not going to bring blessings and barakah in your marriage. It, will, it won't. That doesn't mean that if they started off in a haram and lawful way, that's it forever. No. There's always a chance for Tawbah and repent. As soon as you realize you want to turn to Allah, you say, okay, that's it. We put a stop here. A lot of young people, when, you know, when they, when they talk to me, I say, look, if you want to marry her, you want to marry him, you can do. But from now, when you're speaking to me right now, you make a firm intention right now. That that's it. Any sort of unlawful interaction, any sort of unlawful interaction is seized and we will abstain, refrain from any sort of unlawful interaction from now, this moment, not from tomorrow, right now, and make a tawbah from Allah, and then go through the right way, use the right channels, approach the family, and do the marriage, and you'll get the barakah and blessings. So it doesn't mean that if somebody did do things unlawfully, then it will always be that marriage will always be doomed for you know failure. No, you, there's always ways of redeeming the situation. But before marriage, a taqwa, you start off in an Islamic way. If you want the barakah and blessings in your marriage, avoid a lawful haram relationship. Avoid sins prior to marriage. Like for example, you know, and this is very common. People think when they're engaged that they're, they're probably half married. That's what normally people think. That's what we think. Engagement is like you're halfway there, now it's just a half, a, way, a half left. Engagement 
It's just, engagement is like engaged to marry. You can be engaged to do whatever. It just means that you fix, you just promised. If I promise to sell you this, Mulana Mufti Abdul Mahid, okay, if I promise to sell you this, I say, I'll sell you this after five days. Anything happen? I still have it. I still have it. Nothing's happened. It's just a promise. I might stay with that promise and I should maintain my promise, of course, as a Muslim, but um, I may act as a munafiq, may Allah save me, because going against one's promise is being a munafiq, ayatul munafiq al And I may not sell it to you. It's actually ayatul munafiq al The signs of being a hypocrite. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says three. When you speak, you lie. When you make a promise, you break that promise. When you made a trustworthy person, you breach that trust. That's not a Muslim who does that, by the way. That's a munafiq, a hypocrite. In the words of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Engagement doesn't do anything. It doesn't change anything. You are still strangers. Complete strangers. It doesn't do nothing. Complete strangers. It doesn't change anything. No rules of Islam change. You can't start going out and, and remaining in seclusion, in privacy, going on a date. And that's why all the problems come later in the marriage. Because in many ways, number one, because we are disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are violating the rules of Islam. That's number one. And number two, you know, a lot of people say that we need to get to know one another, even before engagement. You know, like a lot of times people say, how can you just get married without knowing one another? Seriously, you could try to date someone for one year, you'll still never get to know them. And it's actually more harmful. It's more harmful. Having long engagements and seeing one another frequently or infrequently every so often, that's actually more harmful and more disastrous to your future marital life than if you married somebody. Of course, you've investigated, researched and everything, but that's more disastrous. Seriously, it's more disastrous. Why? Because you know when you're when you when you're having that relationship, there's no commitment. You're seeing one another every so often, once a week. It feels really good because you just see, you know, you, your friend or whatever. Once a week, you're relaxed. He's relaxed. He's relaxed. It's fine. You're not talk, thinking about the pressures of life. You're not saying, okay, you know what? We need to go and get buy some napkins. You're not going to think about napkins, are you, right now? You need to go to Asda Tesco. You know what? I need some baby wipes and some nappies and get this. No, 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 that. It's just going out to eat in a restaurant. She's like really put makeup on and she's dressed for the occasion and you just make sure you put all the perfume just before you came. And it want to smell nice. That kind of setup doesn't remain forever. You could be like that for one year. But when you get married and the reality sets in and you start living with one another and you have the daily chores of life, responsibilities, you have children coming, you have to look for a house, you have to look for work, job, it's a, it's, it's, then it becomes difficult. And then they think, oh, this is, this is, this, I can't take this anymore. It was, it was really good before, of course, because you weren't living together. And that's why a lot of times there's actually more cases where so-called love marriages, even though I call them lust marriages, they're not love marriages, but so-called love marriages end up in divorce than arranged marriages. I personally experience more people I have seen, personally, more people I know from a percentage point of view, I know more marriages, more, the divorces that have taken place, more of them, and majority of them were so-called love marriages when they wanted to marry themselves. I ended up in divorce. I know young people, like I remember speaking to, this is a long time ago, there was a sister I remember speaking to three, four years ago, and she was young, and, and her, the brother she wanted to marry, and the parents, like her parents were not really up for the idea, and she wanted to know whether she can do a secret marriage, or a secret nikah, or this, and you know, all these things, subhanAllah, it's just, it's just ridiculous. And she wanted to know, yeah, there are genuine cases, I've actually talked about this, so there are genuine cases, where parents are difficult. I've actually given a lot of talks for the parents. Where parents are difficult, they don't make it easy for our young people. And maybe I'll just talk about that further along, but let me not go there now. But here, 